So solving equations, you'll recall, is really about keeping both sides equal. And how do you keep both sides equal? Well, whatever you do to one side, you also do to the other. And we can show that that's true with a really simple statement. If you start with something like 2 equals 2, which is just so blindingly obvious that you don't even need to point it out, and then if, say, let's, what do we want to do to both sides? Someone pick an operation. Plus, minus, divide, or multiply. Anyone? Plus. Plus. What are we going to add to both sides? Anyone? Give me a number. Three. Plus four. So if we added four to both sides, we're going to get six equals six. All right, pick another operation that we haven't used. Anyone? So divide. What are we going to divide by? Pick a number. Anyone? Three. If we divide both sides by three, we're going to end up with back to... 2 equals 2 again. This is fun, isn't it? Shall we do another one? One more for good measure. So pick one that isn't uh, plus or divide. Minus. Minus. What are we going to minus? Someone give me a number. 23. <laughs> We're going to subtract 23 from both sides and we should get negative 21 equals negative 21. So that's the principle is even if we're dealing with an algebraic expression on one side and a number on the other, that is equal to that. So therefore, whatever we do to one side, if we do the same thing to the other side, to every term in the other side, then you will maintain equality. And eventually, if you choose the right things, and that's the hard thing with algebra, okay, well, which operation do I use and what number do I choose, or what term do I work on? That's the hard bit with algebra. But the um, basic principle in solving equations is do to one, whatever you do to one side, do to another. Okay, so let's have a look at this first one. We have 3x minus 4 equals minus 13. Now, what your aim is, is to make the algebraic term the subject, which in layman's terms means get it by itself. So to get 3x by itself, to get rid of the minus four, we would add four. So if I added four here, minus four plus four equals zero, it's gonna disappear because zero is nothing, right? But we add four to one side, so we've gotta add four to the other side. So that gives us three x minus four plus four equals zero. So just three x we've achieved making x the subject equals minus 13. Now we've got three x's on the left hand side and we don't want three x's, we want one x. So we've got three, three of something and we want to make it... Oh, thank you. What a good... Uh, minus nine, yeah, good, thank you. Um, now if I've got three of something and I only want one of something, I'm going to divide it by three, yeah? So if we divide both sides by three, we get x equals minus three, being the answer for that. Okay. Let's, I might practice. I won't do this middle one, I might do this third one. You want the middle one or the? Yeah, let's do the end one. Okay, so again, the goal is the same, is we want to make h the subject. And here we have a whole term, h minus 10, divided by 4. And that's going to be a pain for us. So to get rid of that, we're going to multiply it by 4. Okay? And because we multiply one side by 4, we're going to multiply both sides by 4. Now, <clears throat> 4 lots of something divided by 4 just leaves you with something. That's because four divided by four is equal to one. So the fours cancel, and that was your design when you multiplied by four. So here, the something was h minus 10. So h minus 10 equals three times four, which is 12. Now, it looks a, a lot more simple. We need to isolate h. To do that, we've got a negative 10 here, 
If we add 10 to it, it will become zero. So we add 10 to both sides, you get H equals 22. Okay, and there's a whole lot of questions you can practice that on. All right, Nate, can you press stop?